What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing sort of a 3D scene and visual effects compositing walkthrough for the recently uploaded infected sort of creature effect shot that we've released. As usual in the future, I will be releasing a full tutorial on how to create these effects, but this specific video is just more of a walkthrough showing some of the general concepts. Before we get started, I want to announce that we have 10 more days on our July Blender Market sale for all of our Blender Market products. To get 40% off on the products in the description below, simply use the discount code july 40 at blender market checkout anyways guys let's get started this is the shot we're going to be doing a little scene walkthrough here i am pretty happy with this result here and it's a fairly simple setup the first thing we did for this shot was track our camera so as you can see here in the blender motion tracking tab we just added a few different tracking points here and tracked our camera and then after tracking our 3d camera and solving it i then added an object track where we've tracked the face of our character here then i applied this camera tracking data to the 3d camera in our scene and this object tracking data to the reconstruction of the face geometry where we were adding our effect so as you can see here if i go back to layout mode this is our view from the camera and if i just play through our timeline here you can see that the head geometry is properly moving with the object track in our scene and uh, you know we have all of our different makeup and creature effects on our construction here now in addition to importing this 3d face into our scene and attaching it to the object track for our uh, character's face we also went into edit mode here and very specifically kind of moved the vertices around in proportional editing mode so that we could align our attributes to this specific character in our scene so we've just used that proportional editing option to adapt our 3d model to our character's face a bit better and again i'll go through this process in more detail in the tutorial but to enable proportional editing you just select this um, button right here while you're in editing mode and then you can uh, drag and uh, you know move more vertices around as well as the vertices closest to them so it's just a little bit more organic way to edit a mesh if you're trying to match it to a specific model in your scene so after reconstructing and adjusting the uh, head of our 3d model here to fit the face of our character here the next thing we did was add a CG vein makeup effect to one of our face models here so as you can see here if I switch to our veins view layer you can see that I've just overlaid some veins on top of this face reconstruction here and there are several different ways you can do this however in this case what I've done is under texture painting I've actually used a texture brush of a cracked concrete material with an alpha channel and then using the uh, stencil tool here I've just kind of overlaid some uh, stenciling you know with this uh, texture brush here to create these veins and it's not a super complicated effect but after a little bit of compositing I found it was uh, pretty good to add a little bit of veins near the surface of her skin as some sort of digital makeup on her face. So after adding our digital veins, I also tried to add some uh, bruising to her face. So I duplicated our 3D face model here and I texture painted a bruise on top of her face. And uh, as you can see here, this is uh, what I got for the bruise. I uh, created an alpha where the bruise wouldn't be. However, I didn't really like the way this effect was looking. So I decided to actually not use this view layer in the end, but I will try to polish this effect in the future to show how you can add some very basic digital bruises as digital makeup in your scene. Finally, after after finishing up our digital makeup it was time to add some creature effects to our scene so I've created one more view layer here for our scales and this was obviously the most prevalent effect in our scene to create it was surprisingly simple I've just created some very basic CG thorns here and if I go to rendered view here this is uh, all our uh, thorn is it's literally just a plane that I've extruded a few times and added sort of a cracked skin material to and after creating that very basic thorn I added a hair particle system to another duplicate duplicate of our 3D face model in our scene. I've adjusted a few of the settings here, but one of the main things I did was actually weight paint where I wanted the creature effect on our character's face here. So I've created a vertex group for this weight painting data. And then under our particle settings, as you can see here, if you go down to vertex group, I've just selected the data that I've painted on our 3D head model here and attached it to our density settings for our thorn particle system. Finally, after adding our thorn particle system, I went into uh, particle edit mode and here here I've just used some of the particle effects to kind of uh, adjust how the uh, thorns are interacting on the skin. You can actually kind of comb the hair here as you can see if I adjust the system and get a different look for the uh, weight painted particles on your scene. And you can actually also delete, you know, 
particles as well. For example, I didn't want any particles by her eye here and some of the weight painting was a little bit rough. So what I did is I just erased the particles by her eye. So uh, there wouldn't be any thorns uh, in that area of her face for the final render. But uh, this is a really nice way that you can use to get a little bit more organic feel for your particle system as you can kind of, you know, adjust where the particles are distributed and their kind of direction and interaction with each other on top of the face model here. As far as lighting goes in this shot, I've done a very basic setup here. I added an HDRI for some environmental lighting that is sort of a similar HDRI to the live action shot from what I could see. And then I've also, as you can see here, added a very basic area light hitting the left side of her face, which as you can see here, if I go to our camera view, we have a window that is on the right side of the face. So I'm trying to match this window source with our uh, area light that I've added to the scene here and give a little bit of a far side key shadow on our character's face here that's coming toward the camera. Finally, after setting up the lighting for the scene, I've separated all of our different effects into different view layers, including a view layer for the shadows of the thorns on our face geometry. And if you don't know what view layers are and how they work, I'll put a link to a tutorial explaining that in the description below. But pretty much what they allow you to do is they allow you to output specific elements of your 3D scene in different renders so that you can composite them all together in your final shot a little bit more effectively. Finally, one more thing I did before exporting and compositing all of our different layers together was I actually, under our camera settings, I went to the depth of field option here and enabled it. And then I've selected the focus object to be the face reconstructions with our thorns here. And I've made that focus point where the thorns on her nose would be in the scene. And the reason for that is because in our live action shot, our focus is pretty shallow. So we want to try to match that with the CG camera. So as you can see here, the sharpest point of our thorns is by her nose. But but as they get further away from her nose and closer to the camera, they start blurring a bit, which matches the way this character was filmed in the live action shot. So that was pretty important to blending the thorns together as a standard blur effect would blur everything and uh, wouldn't have this kind of gradient that would help match it to the live action shot so effectively. So after doing this, I rendered out our passes and went to the compositor. And this is our node setup here. It's uh, not super complicated. As you can see, I started off with our live action movie clip, these undistortion and scale nodes are added automatically when you 3D track your scene and solve for the optics of your camera as well. But uh, we have our live action shot here and the first thing we added was our vein layer here. So as you can see, if I uh, just output our veins here with a view node, this is the first thing we added to our scene. And as you can see, I have our veins view layer here. It's going into a blur, which is blurring it and matching it to the shot a little bit better. Then I've dropped down the brightness with an RGB curves here and then finally, multiplied that vein layer over another version of our live action shot to kind of blend it into the scene a bit better. And I've just played around with the factor here to adjust how prevalent they would be in the scene. And I've overlaid them on top of our live action shot here with the alpha over node, again, adjusting our factor to kind of decide how much veins I wanted. So as you can see here, if I put the factor at one, it's not looking too good. It's not blending into our shot very well. But if I bring it down a little bit, it just kind of blends. So it seems like it's a little bit under her skin and a little bit more organic looking. So after adding our veins to the shot, I uh, tried to add our initial bruising effect, but it didn't really do that much and I'm not too impressed with it, but I'll show you guys anyway, just for the sake of the tutorial. So this is our shot with the veins in addition to our bruising. And as you can see here, it's uh, looking okay, but it looks almost like a shadow and it's not looking very organic in my opinion, but it did help with the blending of our thorns that we added in our next view layer. So I went on ahead and kept it. But anyways, finally I added our scales and our scales shadow catcher. So first I added our scales shadow catcher. So as you can see here, this is our shot with the shadows of our scales overlaid on top of our character here. And for this view layer, I've added a little bit of blur to kind of uh, blend it into the shot a bit better and adjusted the curves a tiny bit. And then with our alpha over, I've brought down the factor to 0.5. So it wasn't quite as dark of a shadow. As you can see, if I bring it up to one, our shadows for the thorns get pretty dark here. But if you look at these shadows in your live action shot, you want to try to match that generally to the CG shadows that you're adding. So I brought down the factor there. And finally, we added our thorns view layer here on top of everything. As you can see here, I have our thorns or scales is what I called it in this project uh, view layer here going into a bokeh blur to kind of blur it into the shot a bit better and match our live action plate. Then I have it going to an RGB curve setting to darken it down a bit and match it to our live action. And then finally, over 
overlaid on top of our live action shot to get this final result. But uh, anyways, guys, as I mentioned, I'll be doing a full tutorial on this shot pretty soon here. So stay tuned for that. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.